Hey guys, Miles here again at Tactile Hive, and today I want to discuss trigger manipulations with you, specifically four different types of trigger manipulations. And uh, before we get started, a few uh, disclaimers here, a few notes here. Um, one is there are primarily three trigger manipulations that are taught out there in the wild. Um, I've added a fourth one based on uh, taking a class with Joe Farewell which is very similar to one of them, but I'm going to break it apart and I'll, I'll give you more details in a bit when we, when we get to it. All right, but these four uh, different trigger manipulations um, typically are taught for certain circumstances, but there are certain trigger manipulations that shooters will use for every situation, all right? So take these as uh, information and knowledge and do whatever you want with it. I'm going to discuss the different trigger manipulations and the common uses for them, but as I mentioned, there are some shooters who will just use the same type of trigger press or trigger manipulation for every type of shot, right? And that's completely okay. If that's your style, that's, that's fine. Um, the idea of this video, the main point is just to share the different trigger uh, presses with you, right? So the first one is what you may have heard of called slapping, okay? Slapping is where when you basically, basically are going to grip your gun and you're just going to slap that trigger and take a shot, okay? As fast as you can, okay? Now, um, this is going to be very similar to the second trigger manipulation that I'm going to talk to you about, which um, I mentioned, I learned from Joe Farwell, which is called rolling, right? But I'm separating the two, right? And, I, and I'll, I'll dive into this a little bit more. I know it might not make sense right now, but uh, let me uh, further discuss slapping here. So slapping is typically used when you're shooting point blank and you don't really need super, you know, a lot of control with your gun. Okay, meaning I have an easy target, maybe within three yards, I can just slap the trigger and most likely I'm going to hit. I'm going to be pretty accurate. Okay, as long as my sights are on target, I'll probably hit um, uh, center mass. Okay, that is slapping. Now, slapping doesn't necessarily mean you have to have a really fast jerk, okay? And this is where I'm separating the two uh, trigger manipulations of slapping and rolling, okay? Now, uh, for example, Tactical Performance Center, they talk about slapping, but they also call it a zipper pull because when you're, when you're pulling a zipper, right, you can pull it quickly, you can pull it slowly. The key here is you're doing it consistent at a consistent speed. You're not changing the speed at the beginning, midway, and at the very end. It's just like a zipper, right? So slapping, I'm going to put to one side on their own here where it's slapping. You're literally going as fast as you can. And that's typically going to be when you're pretty close to your, your target. All right, the zipper pull trigger manipulation, when you learn it through Tactical Performance Center, they bucket that with, with slapping. And as I, as I mentioned, because you can change the tempo or the speed of your slap, right? It could be slow, it could be quick. I'm going to categorize the zipper pull as similar to rolling, okay, rolling the trigger. Now rolling is where you are doing the, sl the same motion as slapping. You're not going to a wall or anything like that, but it is more controlled, right? So it's your, your, your consistent speed throughout, okay? You're not just slapping the trigger, okay? It's just consistent. And this typically could be, let's say for example, maybe anywhere from let's say three to five yards or three to seven yards. Now these, these, yard, these distances are just you know, estimates here. It's going to depend on your shooter capability, size of the target, distance of the target, all that stuff, right? Um, or I should say primarily shooter's capability. So rolling is when you are slapping the trigger, but you're more controlled, right? It's, it's definitely consistent pressure throughout the trigger pull and there's no jerking whatsoever. So that is rolling. The third trick of manipulation is probably the most common that um, you'll see around and that is the reset and prep. Right? Well, this is the idea here is that you want to, when you first take a shot, you're going to get to your wall, right? Every trigger has some kind of wall. And that wall is the, the point where before you break the shot, it just kind of stops, your trigger stops. That is the wall, all right? And what you want to do is you're going to take your shot from that wall. So there's, it's not slapping, you're not starting for, oh, you're, with your trigger finger all the way here, you're starting from that wall. And then when you're ready to break the shot, you pull the trigger. Right? So that is shooting from the wall, right? But the reset and prep part of it comes from this. So I take the shot, slide cycles, right? As the slide cycles, I'm going to reset. I'm going to exaggerate here and take my finger off of the trigger, but I would reset and then go back to the wall. So that's what's called reset and prep, right? A lot of shooters use this method, okay? And um, some of them will use it for every type of shot out there, up close, far, so they're consistent throughout. And I like that too. I, I generally stick with that as well, right? So again, this is where we start at the wall, 
we start at the wall, we pull the trigger, the shot breaks, the slide is going to cycle, I'm going to reset, I'm exaggerating, I'm taking my finger off the trigger just for demonstration purposes, and then I come right back on it, to the wall, so I'm ready to take another shot. Okay, that is your reset and prep. And that is um, a trigger manipulation that if we wanted to kind of stick to the distances, uh, the guidelines here, the baselines here, that is something, you know, maybe, maybe you could say that's anywhere from let's say seven to 15 yards, all right? Again, these are just estimates here to kind of give you an idea, but there are shooters who will use reset and prep every, throughout every distance, even from far away. Okay, so that just depends on um, your skill level and just use that knowledge and this, uh, use this knowledge for whatever you want, right? But that'll just give you a barometer in terms of the distance for the recent and prep. The fourth trigger manipulation is called staging. And this is where you are going to start from the wall, just like we did in the reset and prep, but there is an added step there, right? And you need to be really in tune with your trigger and your gun to do staging, because what you're going to do is you are going to get to that wall, which we described in the third trigger manipulation, resetting, prepping. So you're gonna to get to a wall, right? But before you break the shot, you're just going to go about 80% before breaking the shot. So this is what I mean, you need to be in tune with your trigger. You need to intimately know when it's going to break. So what happens is you get to the wall, you go, you put about 80% of pressure before it's breaking, right? The last 20% you wait until you have the exact shot that you want, then you release that last 20% and break the shot. Okay, so that's why it's called the 80-20 or, or staging and we, we refer to it as 80-20. So when you're doing the staging, you're staging it by going to 80%, you go to the wall and put 80% pressure, then the 20% to break the shot. Now, why is this important here, All right? So first is, where does that 80% happen? Let's say if you're at the wall and you, you might be asking, I'm already at the wall, I can't put 80% because if I put more, it's gonna break. Well, you might consider maybe there's still space in the pad of your finger. Maybe you wanna put 80% to get rid of all of that, all of the slack in your, in your finger pad here. So that might be the 80%. And then break it the last 20% when you're ready to take the shot, right? Now, if let's say you're assuming, I'm assuming you've taken all the slack in your finger pad here, that 80% is where you need to understand your trigger and how much pressure is needed to break that shot. So only you can know that. I can't, I can't explain that for you here. You'll know it through the sensitivity of the pressure of that, that trigger where you know, okay, this is about 80%. I know I got about 20% more before it breaks. That's what you would wanna do for staging. Now, why is this so important? This staging, if we're going to use these yard lines again, is when you need to take precise shots. So you're you're not shooting rapid fire. This is, let's say, bullseye shooting. I'm not a bullseye shooter here, but I'm just using it as an analogy. Bullseye shooters might use a different trigger manipulation, but this is for practical shooting distances, perhaps maybe say 15, 25 uh, yards, in for competition. Staging, where you're really gonna need to take the time and nail that shot. This is where it happens best, where you go to the wall, you know you need to take a long shot, so you have some time. You have some time to stage it. What does that mean again? 80%. Now when you know you're ready and on target, break the shot, use the last 20%, and that's going to give you your best chance to nail that target, all right? So there you guys have it, four trigger manipulations. One is slapping up close, where you're just literally jerking that trigger up close. Second is rolling, where it is pretty much slapping the same thing. Um, it's also referred to as a zipper pull, or like a, what I like to call it, but it's like the slap, but you have consistent pressure throughout your entire trigger pull. Then you have the reset and prep, which is extremely popular in the shooting world. Um, it can be used in all distances. And then you have staging, where you take your trigger to the wall, push it, put about 80% pressure, and then when you're ready to take a shot, 20%. Right? And that is more for precision and long, uh, long distance shooting with a pistol. Well, I hope you guys like the four trigger manipulations. Give it a try. Remember what I mentioned earlier. Um, there are shooters who will use one trigger manipulation for everything. This is more about giving you information so that you can test it out and find your own style. If you guys like the video, please hit like, uh, leave a comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.